everybody. Or did I decide to tear apart this old ceramic heater so that way I could possibly repurpose it for something else. It was laying in a trash pile, of course destined to get um, tossed in the garbage. It was just some of the le leftover stuff from my grandmother's estate. So I was just laying around in the trash pile. I was like, can I have this so that way I can tear it apart? And of course, yeah. <laughs> I got to take it home. So, so I had to tear it apart. And I kind of wish I'd actually done the, the tear down on video, to be honest. This heater is probably not even 10 years old. And of course, you can see it's definitely had its little fair share of use. Well, whoever had it, um, I think my I think it was my grandma's. Um, smells like cigarette smoke, obviously. You can see the built-in filter has done quite well. It's kind of dirty. Don't think anybody would want to reuse this thing. <laughs> so I saved it from the trash. Set where I could tear it apart. What I've done here is I have I have decided to repurpose this thing into a blower. As you see, it has like a squirrel cage blower assembly in it. It has two blowers, one here, one there, and a shade of pole motor that runs the two. I was going to take an opportunity to just go over some of the kind of interesting things about this heater. Um, it uses it, it used electronics to control it. Um, if I can find the original top. Well, that's what's left of it. As you see, it had... A few um, temperature settings you would set it to, ranging from between 60 to 80 degrees. And it had a low and a high setting. So the this used to be a button that went in the center. It also had an oscillating setting, which the oscillating setting was just controlled by a push button on the bottom, which is a push button on off switch. The oscillator motor is oscillating motor is right here. It's just a synchronous motor like a, like what you'll find in various appliances. Um, for example, the timer in a washing machine or the motor that's in your ice maker. Just for an example. So here is the, the bulk of the electronics in this thing. That's what's left of them. I've already snipped just about everything loose and pulled it out. This was the control board that went up top. It is obviously a digital um, circuit. There is a um, somewhere in there. There is an IC, a little microcontroller. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take those screws out so I can pull that circuit board off of there, just to examine it, I guess. Which you may notice the big resistor on the corner. That's how this thing steps down 120 volts AC down to a lower voltage. It just uses a resistor. Not the most efficient method. Anyways, there's your LEDs, and you have this little microcontroller. Actually has home stamped on it. This is this is a Holmes heater. H A W F twenty four three B. Below that is R zero seven one six. Interesting to have Holmes actually on the chip itself. Surely somebody else made some other company manufactured that chip. These two wire leads here go to a thermistor that is on the back grill. This is the intake on the back of the heater. This is how it would measure the air temperature in the room. So essentially what I've done here is I gutted this thing of its heater and electronics. I've left only the blower in place. 
and the um, oscillating is not going back on there either. I'm just going to make this a, this a simple blower. I have no idea how much air it's going to put out, but just for the heck of it. This thing appears, can't say for certain. Oh, that's really wonderful soldering right there. What a mess. I thought this thing had an um, infrared LED for like a remote control, but I guess it doesn't. Yeah, it did have a little thing on the front, right? That was right here, and it looked like it looked like it'd be like a remote receiver or whatever. Now, it's, here's where things get interesting about this heater. Um, well, for one thing, this is the thermal fuse and the um, safety switch. It's just a gravitational switch. This weight here, when it's when this thing is turned a certain direction, that weight turns and it closes the switch. It's a safety switch, so the way the heater, heater gets tipped over, it loses power. So, but we'll get on the subject of the heater here shortly. Um, one thing that's inter interesting I've noticed about these newer heaters and other appliances, small appliances like this, is you may notice with a lot of desk fans and things like that, you may notice you have a high, medium, and low speed setting where you can mainly set high, medium, or low. And your motor would have the different um, leads for the respective speeds. However, this particular fan blower is just, it has your standard one speed shader pole motor, which is going to make it dang easy to wire up as a blower. This heater did, however, was it was, however, able to control the speed of the fan through this mechanism here. Can't exactly get a read out of that. It's probably like some sort of MOSFET or whatever. Um, I think it works sim. I, I think it actually works similar to the way a dimmer switch works for like a lamp. A good example here would be this wood burning stove. This brandy wood burning stove that I have now. The blower on it. It's a variable speed, but it uses a single speed um, shade upon motor. Make sure my light in there. You may be able to tell. It's kind of hard to see. But we use it uses electronics to actually control the um, speed of the fan. Demonstrate that for a second. That's high. And as I turn the knob, it slows down. For example, that is low and it's and it's just barely spinning. Now if I turn this knob back. We're back to high speed, and of course, off. So yeah, that's essentially how the speed control on this device works. Um, I imagine when you actually powered it on. Now I never actually did test it before I tore it apart. I just <laughs> took the script, just took it apart, and just done my thing with it. But um, I do believe that when it was when you would power it on. Or whatnot, it would actually smoothly adjust the speed of the blower. It could actually vary. It could actually vary the speed and whatnot. Let's go talk about the um, heaters a little bit. The actual heating elements. This is a ceramic heater. I'm sure you may have heard of the um, the term ceramic heater before, and you may have heard that ceramic heaters are safer. They're generally known as safe heaters. 
They say if you have a small space heater, you're better off with a ceramic heater. These are the two elements that came out of it. Now this thing, at least the um, the label says 1500 watts, and I'm sure it would probably count as a little bit of that wattage to run the motor for the fan. But let's just assume these are rated for 750 watts a piece. Just out of assumption. We have a high and low heat setting on these. So what makes ceramic heaters safe is these things are essentially the same as a positive tension coefficient thermistor. When your fan is blowing air across this, um, it's trying to cool it down. However, let's say if the fan stalls or you lose or, or something else causes the airflow to stop flowing across this, once the ceramic heater reaches a certain temperature, it begins to stop um, conducting electricity, almost to down towards barely conducting anything. Once it hits that maximum temperature, it just sits there and it only draws us a little bit of power, just enough to keep it at that maximum temperature, but not over. There are videos on YouTube of people demonstrating ceramic heater safety where they actually pull the element out and they even go as far as to sit the element on top of a paper towel you know, or something that's that could easily catch fire and, it just, and they sit there and run it and it never catches fire because these things, once they hit that maximum temperature, they essentially stop conducting or they really slow down how much they conduct. They, they throttle back essentially. And whenever you restore airflow across this and cool it down, it begins to conduct more, more electricity and thus putting out more heat. So again, this one has two of them. So for example, unlock the tungsten wired heating elements like you'll find in an electric dryer. Same goes for the kind of heating elements you'll find in an electric furnace or an air handler that is for a heat pump. And also unlike the elements that you'll have on let's say a stove or an oven, the ceramic heater elements will throttle back once that certain temperature threshold is met. You generally will not see these glow. Of course with the regular tungsten style coiled element like we'd have in a clothes dryer, when, let's say for example, there's not much airflow across the element, or even in cases with a dryer normal operation of an element, these kinds of heat elements do not, they don't fall back. They can just eventually get so hot to the point where if, let's say if airflow was stopped across the element, the element would get so hot that it would melt. And in many cases, it cause a fire. So as I mentioned, the element inside of a the ceramic heater element will not will generally not glow. Now sometimes you can look behind your clothes dryer and you'll see the element glowing. In this case, it's not because the dryer is already up to temperature, but don't be alarmed if you peek behind your clothes dryer and see a little bit of a glow come from the back of it. That's totally normal. Now all those ceramic heating elements by design are safe and should never get extremely hot um, due to the fact that they act like polyfuses or PTC thermistors when they get so when they reach a certain temperature and throttle down, you'll still find safeties like these thermal cutouts or the thermal fuse like this over here. They still, they generally do still have those safety devices there. Now, because of the fact that the ceramic element will not get extremely hot, let's say in the case of a fan failure, it's generally, it's generally common to find these mounted right inside of a, of a plastic sleeve. The elements used to go right in here. They were mounted right in this plastic um, holding mechanism, just like this. They used to be in there essentially like that. 
In contrast, elements like this hairdryer element have to be mounted around a non-combustible material like this here. The hair dryer element is very similar to that of the element in a clothes dryer or an air handle with an electric heat strip. They had to be mounted on something that's non-combustible. Whereas the ceramic element, due to its built-in safety, which is actually built into the element itself, the, the, the fact that once it gets to a certain temperature, it, it um, stops putting out heat. They can actually they can mount these and stuff like this, and it's a lot safer. So, anyways, um, I know this is kind of over the place, but that's what's inside of a lot of space heaters. And I figured I'd just do this video because um, I thought this particular heater was kind of interesting. And of course, for those of you who are not familiar with exa exactly how ceramic ele elements work and why they're safe. Um, and I find that the speed control of these newer um, newer heaters and such is pretty interesting. So with this here, what I'm planning to do, as I mentioned, I plan on making a blower out of this thing. Because I have a cord in the floor over here. Actually, it's around, here, it's around here somewhere, I know. <laughs> um, I've got a cord around here that has a built-in switch on it. All I would all I would really need to do is just wire that cord up to this motor. And of course, put some wire ties where I put the wires together and it'd be, it'd be um, wired and ready to go. It's very simple. Before I popped this thing up and I was concerned I was going to be dealing with a motor that had multiple speeds, but no. This one here is actually just a regular single speed shader pull motor. Which is funny. Actually made by GE. There's actually a GE label on the side of this thing. Okay, I decided to go ahead and wire this thing up to that cord I was telling you about. There it is wired up just for the time being. There is the on off switch built into the cord. This came, this um, cord came off of a um, lamp that used to be used for heating my snacks enclosure, but where the end of the cord actually met the, the um, light socket, there had been some pretty severe corrosion to the um, terminals, and one wire was breaking loose, nearly shorting out with the other, which is not good. So I, re I replaced that and I kept the cord just because I had that on off switch. So we're going to demonstrate this. As you can hear, it's relatively quiet. Um, there's a little bit of off balance on one of the um, one of the um, blowers. This thing it really throws some air. I kid you not. Have a listen. Pretty impressive, I think. I'm going to turn it back off. And the switch is actually ready for 3 amps, so um, it's well within the uh, tolerance of this fan. That fan motor probably only draws maybe about an amp or so. It's just a basic shaded pole motor. But yeah, very impressive. Now in case you were wondering what I had planned um, for this blower fan, was I needing a way to sort of pull hot air from this living room to other parts of the house when I had this wood stuff going this winter. Last year when I had the fireplace going, I noticed that it would get pretty warm in this room, but not much heat would travel to the rest of the house. I mean, you would get some transfer, but not a whole lot. So what I was thinking is if I could mount me a blower up on a seedling somewhere in this area, mount it to the wall, and run some sort of ducting, a 
along this wall and connect it with this vent register here to help push air into other parts of the house because this is it is a pretty long run and I thing is I don't know if that thing had enough power enough blowing I don't know if it put on enough CFMs to really <laughs> be able to do a, a run this long and I still don't know what I would use as ducting I mean I could use some dryer vent duct but that would look that would just look really really funky I would think but um <laughs> I saw this in the trash pile and I was like I'm gonna see what I can do with this thing and turns out it's gonna make a spectacular blower once I get it reassembled so anyways hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching Hey everybody, I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q Computer Channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to Q Computer Channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that we actually get notified of these updates. Did you know that I am also on a second channel that's CubeComp MTDX? Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, and all sorts of other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support. And thanks for watching this video.